channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about flying with a musical instrument, specific to me, flying with a bassoon. Now there are several steps that I take before I ever even step foot on a plane to ensure that I and my bassoon will both arrive safely. The first of these is when I book the airline ticket. Prior to booking, I go ahead and check in with the Federation of Musicians and their airline rating system. They have a green for a good airline, a yellow for cautious, and a red for maybe you should not consider flying with a musical instrument with that airline company. This ensures a bit of safety for traveling with an instrument because if I choose a green light company, I know that musicians have not been reporting challenges specific to that airline. The next thing that I like to do is make sure that all of my specific music instrument insurance premiums are up to date and that I am safe for travel. I like to work with Clarion Insurance largely because they cover me not only when I am traveling, but also when I am shipping my instrument and also when I am at rehearsals and concerts. By dealing only with musical instruments, which is what this company does, I am ensured that they will take care if anything accidentally happens. The next thing I like to do is make sure I have a copy of the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012. Now on pages 75 and 76 of this document, you will find all of the information you need in order to make sure that your instrument is able to be carried on the plane with you. They have set guidelines specifically for musicians of what is required of the musician, but also what is required of the airline. Although this might not necessarily help with international travel, it's a document that I always like to make sure that I have on hand, largely because if I ran into a steward or stewardess who was not up to date on the policies, this would give me a bit of leeway to negotiate taking my instrument on the plane. Closer to the time of departure, I like to make sure that I switch my reads from their daily cases to my travel case. As I move the reads to the different read case, I also like to be sure that I am taking the reads appropriate to the bassoon I am taking on the plane. I use a shorter style read for my heckle and a longer style read for my Puchner bassoon. Now my travel read case is a reads and stuff case. I like this because it is a really strong, hard plastic, but also it has the ability to hydrate the reeds while traveling. I like to hydrate the reeds while traveling because I know even just for me that my skin has a tendency to dry out in the airplane air. So I know the same is happening to my reeds. The next thing I like to do in preparation for flying is to empty out my entire bassoon case. By doing this, I am ensured that there aren't any straggling reed tools that are hidden within the case that could catch me up at security. I thought you might be interested in what I took on my last travel, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. security, I like to go straight to the gate. I do this in large part because as they begin to board the plane, I want to be first for my area in order to board. This will allow me greater overhead bin capacity so that there's a better chance that my bassoon will not have any question of being checked, but it also ensures that I will be sitting in a close location to the bassoon so I can keep an eye on it. The last few flights I have taken have been very small planes. In fact, they are two seaters with an aisle just between. And I have to say that each time my bassoon has actually still fit. This is in large part because I am using a Marcus Bona case and the width of the case still fits the width of the overhead bin. I've also flown with my Cobalt case and had a similar option. And this is on planes where roller bags still needed to be checked. So be sure to double check the dimensions of the overhead bin and also your case dimensions prior to flying. If by chance you are in a position where you do need to check your instrument, I highly suggest the following. First off, 
do not sign a waiver. If you sign a waiver, you're negating any responsibility of the airline for any damage that could happen. The second piece that I would suggest is that once you get your instrument from baggage claim, that you take it out and you visually look it over, but you also play the instrument. I suggest playing the instrument to be sure that no damage that you can't visually see has happened to the instrument, but you find that damage when you play the instrument. I suggest doing all of this at the baggage claim, although it may draw some attention, largely because if there are any challenges that have happened, any damage, this allows you the ability to address the situation at the airport so that there are no questions about when the damage actually occurred. Okay guys, I hope you have safe travels for all of your bassoon adventures. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you wanna make sure you don't miss any future videos, be sure to click that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time. Bye.